How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly flavored? <laughs> highly favored? Yeah. Turn to someone and tell them, did you get God's attention? See, we're to get his attention in worship. If he gets your attention, if you get his attention, he gets, <laughs> hello. You touch his heart, he touches you. Amen. And there isn't anything greater than God's presence. That's what we all look for, isn't it? Is there anybody here that wants to be miserable? Amen. Why do we want to be joyful and happy? Because that's where we came from. Amen. We came from the greatest joyful and happy, the greatest high. That's why he's called the most high. Amen. We came from God. So the whole world is looking for him, but the devil, the powers of darkness, put bottles, drugs, sex, all kinds of perversion to keep us from getting the fulfillment from above. So we must fight for God's presence. Amen? And the word says that we live and have our being in him. Now just because you don't see it doesn't mean it ain't there. Everybody do this. Put your hand up and go like this. You feel something? It's called God. Hallelujah. See, so you're, you're walking. He, we live and breathe and have our being in him. He's there. Can everybody hear me? All right. Praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Welcome to Tuesday Night Live. God is good. Anybody want to be a partaker of the divine? To be a partaker of the divine things of God, it means you are taking part. Amen? Taking part. One of the things the enemy doesn't want you to do is take part or become a partaker. So he puts all kinds of distractions, everything that he can in our way. Every day. You know, the devil doesn't sleep, you know. Either the demons sleep. God doesn't sleep either, thank God. Either the angels that work on our behalf, they don't sleep either. Hallelujah. The only time I want to sleep is if I got to get a message. <laughs> Turn to John 10. Because God speaks to us in dreams and visions, amen? <laughs> John chapter 10. Glory to the Lamb. John 10, verse 6. We're going to speak it together because what you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. How many of y'all know we're in a war? Amen. How many of y'all God is raising up warriors? We're not wimps. We're warriors. This is not a Bible study. This is a training session. We must be trained up to know how to battle. Amen. God has given us the dominion, but people don't know how to use it. In John 10, 7, let's speak it together. Then Jesus said to them again, Most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep, and all whoever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. It didn't say pastor. It said pasture. Amen? Then the thief, the thief does not come except to what? Steal and to kill, and to destroy. Hello. To steal, to kill, and to what? Destroy. Yes. So if he's stealing, something's being stolen from your life. Amen. Things are being destroyed and killed. You know, the first thing the devil wants to steal from you is your what? Identity. Some people have never reached their identity yet. They still don't know who they are. Of course, they're going in the wrong places to find out who they are. Amen? 
Jesus said, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go out and, and find, in and out and find pasture. The thief does not come to what? Except to steal, kill, and destroy. I have come that they may have it life and that they may have it what? More abundantly. To have life abundantly, you must be a partaker of the divine. That's the only way. Amen? I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. So there's something important about partaking in the divine. We must become a giver of ourselves and time. A giver of our what? Self and time. What? To who? God. Why? To par take part of the divine life. See, remember we talked about you must be positioned as a, uh, to be positioned as a partaker of the divine, you must be a seeker and a sower. A what? Seeker and a sower. Amen. Now, how do you sow? You sow with your mouth. We're not talking about giving money. Not that it doesn't help. But it's about you, out of your mouth, your breath. That's why we sing every word that comes up here. That's why we do the prayers. Why? Because the more you sow, the more you reap. The more you speak light, the more you eat light. And darkness begins to flee. So the key is called cooperation. Everyone say cooperation. Yeah. Cooperation. So when we cooperate, we want to cooperate with integrity, with honor, and with respect. Or you'll be limited of your partaking of the divine. Does everybody understand that? You'll be limited of the partaking of the divine and service to the divine. Why? The key is cooperation with integrity, honor, and respect. Or you'll be limited of partaking in the divine and service. Ephesians chapter 2. Partakers of the divine. In other words, partakers of the heavenly things. I mean, you know, everybody's got a storehouse in heaven with their name on it. It's loaded. It's loaded, I'm telling you. If God were to release it all, it could kill you. You wouldn't know what to do with it. Ephesians 2. Partakers of the divine. In verse 1, Ephesians 2, verse 1, glory. Anybody got a wow? wow? Come on, John, come up here and tell your wow. I want to hear your wow. Wow, let me get him a wow wow. This is a wow mic. Give God the glory for this one. Amen. Remember the Lord shared, what was it, a week ago or two? Oorah. Come on. Come up here. Come on. Uh, that God was going to begin to do wows. Is that thing working? Okay. Oh, come over here. Okay. okay. Here. Right here, girl. Okay. So... Three years ago, we got a piece of property. Lord led it to do uh, business on it, Mama G Farms. And today we had received a letter that we have received forgiveness of the loan for that property. How much? $171,000. Snap! Gone. Yeah! Glory! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so a couple nights before we got the letter, I got a, had a dream that I had walked into a room where my earthly father was, and he handed me a um, credit card and said, take care of it. When, at that moment, I knew it wasn't my earthly father. He's gone to you know, heaven anyway. But I knew it was, a, a, you know, it was God saying, here, take care of it with his card. 
and I think it's unlimited. So <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna, there's more to come. I'm yeah, I'm not yes. So we're we're blessed. We're blessed. Very awesome. Let's give God a mighty big hand. Amen. <laughs> Tell me God can't do it. Uh huh. Uh huh. He can do all things because he never loses the battle. We just get out of position and get our butt kicks. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Let's speak it. And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience among whom also we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, and by grace you have been saved. Now what's grace? God's plan of escape. It is never take it as Favor from God. You earn God's favor. I mean, what do you tell? Oh, it's unmerited favor. No, it isn't. It, he, when you called out to God, you said, Lord, help. And he said, mercy. When you accepted the invitation for help, he released grace. Grace is God's plan to escape. Now, that means you must cooperate. Amen? You cooperate with the plan of escape or you don't escape. Now, what are you escaping? The deception of the powers of darkness, the devil, and the wrath of God at the end. Amen? Is everybody okay? And verse 6, And raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace, in other words, his plan, and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. Why did he send Jesus? It says he was full of grace and truth to plan to get out, to plan to escape. Amen? For by grace you've been what? Saved. So if you're not cooperating with the plan, are you saved? No. You're going to blow it. You'll lose it. The plan is what keeps you. That's why the word says work out your salvation. With what? Fear and trembling. What are you doing? You're working out the plan with God. To get the heck out of the grip of the devil and the powers of darkness and escape the wrath of God which is coming in the end. Hello. Hello. For by grace you've been saved through faith, and not of yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not of works, lest anyone should boast. Hallelujah. The only thing our real responsibility is to cooperate. Cooperate. Everyone say cooperate. See, what you're doing is then you're partaking of the divine grace. Amen? <laughs> and how does it, it's going to take us out, out of escape from the enemy. The deceptions, the powers of darkness. And by cooperating, we're actually seeking, sowing, and denying your flesh. Amen? You're seeking and you're sowing and you're denying your flesh. You're denying your own will and you're exchanging it for his will. Proverbs 18. Proverbs 18. Thank you, Master. Partakers of the divine. In verse 21. Proverbs 18, verse 21. What does it say? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And those who love it will eat its fruit. Death and life in the power of your tongue. Also your taxes. 
Also your thoughts. Hello? Even your letters. Amen? Only the divine tongue, which is submissive and humble to the character of the words of Christ, can partake of the divine. Does God let... Remember what happened in the garden. What did he do? He threw out Adam and Eve. Everybody out of the pool, right? But the tree of life was still there. And they begged God to come back to get to that tree of life. He said no. He shut them down. Why? He could no longer allow them to partake of the divine. Does everybody understand that? It wasn't until Jesus came. He rejects the pride, the proudful, and he gives grace more of the plan to escape to those who are humble. Humble is submissive, right? So death in life is in the power of your tongue and all the other things I've mentioned, texts, thoughts, and all the other letters and only the divine tongue, which is submissive and humble to the character of the words of Christ, can partake of the divine. See, a lot of people think they're taking a, of the divine, but they're really not. Because God won't allow it. How many of y'all know rebellion? Person's in rebellion? Person that's grumbling and complaining? Person that's blaming everybody else? person that's self-centered or perverse will be rejected to partake of the divine. Why? Because it's all considered pride. Does everybody understand? And this is what the enemy is trying to do, get us in a self-centered mode where it's about us, it's about us, it's about us, when it's about him. In Hebrews 3, Remember all those that came before Jesus and they said, Lord, we worked our butt off for you. We cast out devils. We did this. We did that. And he said, I don't know you, man. What do you mean you don't know us? They were full of pride. They wouldn't let them partake of the divine. Hebrew 3. In verse 1. Is everybody there? Hebrews chapter 3, verse 1. Therefore, holy brethren, partakers of what? The heavenly calling. That's called partaking of the what? Divine. Consider the apostle and high priest of our confession, Christ Jesus, who was faithful to him, who appointed him, as Moses also was faithful in his, in his house. For this one has been counted worthy of more glory than Moses, inasmuch as he who built the house has more honor than the house. For every house is built by someone, but he who built all things is God. And Moses indeed was faithful in all his house as a servant for a testimony of those things which would be spoken afterward. But Christ is a son over his own house, whose house we are, whose house we are if we hold fast the confession and the rejoicing of the hope firm to the end. Therefore, as the Holy Spirit says, today if you will hear his voice, everyone say hear his voice, and not harden your hearts as in rebellion. In the day of trial in the wilderness where your fathers tested me, tried me, says the Lord, and saw many of my works 40 years. Therefore, I was angry with that generation and said they will always go astray in their heart. And they have not known my ways. So I swore in my wrath they shall not enter my rest. Beware, brethren, lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. But exhort one another daily while it is called today, lest any of you be hardened to the sinfulness, I mean decept, the deceitfulness of sin. For we have become what? Partakers of Christ, which is partakers of the anointing of God eternal presence, power, and truth if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. While it is said today, if you hear his voice and not harden your hearts, is in rebellion. Again, partakers of the heavenly or divine calling, 
<laughs> See, because the enemy's influence is to harden your heart with offense, um, rejection, anything, presumption. A lot of people assume a lot of things and harden their hearts because they make mistakes. If he can cause offense or a hardened heart and all these other things, it prevents an individual from partaking from the divine. Proverbs 12. Proverbs 12. Verse 1 and 2. Whoever loves what? Instruction. Loves what? Knowledge. But he who hates correction is what? Stupid. I think that's one of my favorite scriptures. <laughs> he who hates correction. Man, some people just don't like to be corrected. Hallelujah. No one escapes the, care, the chastening of the Lord. Amen. <laughs> a good man obtains favor from the Lord, but a, a man of wicked intentions, he will what? He'll condemn. Wow. <laughs> no one escapes the chastening of the Lord. Everyone gets chastened at some time. But many people run from it. And when they run from it, they never get an opportunity to partake of the divine until they turn and let God correct them and chasten them. Second Peter chapter 1. Glory. Second Peter chapter 1. In verse 2. Everybody okay? You know, one of the things we have to be careful with also, the Word tells us, you know, be careful who you associate with. Amen? Bad company corrupts what? Good habits. You got to be careful of things that you put in your eyes and your ears and so forth. In verse 2, let's speak it together. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power has given to us all things. His divine power partaking of the divine. Amen? He says he's given to us this divine power. In other words, we're partaking of it so that we can have all things that pertain to life in this realm. And godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue. By which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises. That through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and virtue knowledge. To knowledge self-control control over the old man. And to self-control, perseverance, and perseverance, godliness. To godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For these things are yours and abound. If you do these things, you will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness, and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will what? Never stumble. So as an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Partakers of the divine power, godliness, and to partake or take part of his divine nature. How do you get these? With great precious promises you must believe and receive. Amen. In other words, we partake of God's divine. We're not takers of the world. We're givers. Amen? But the one thing God does is he sets it up so that you and I can partake. That's why he says, he who eats of my flesh and drinks of my blood has eternal life. Why? You're partaking because he is the tree of life. And his 
flesh is his word and his blood is his spirit, the drink. And Psalm 37. Psalm 37. Glory. Wow. Wow. That's a good wow, wow. We had somebody else that got, uh, had $30,000 in debt. It was gone. I've seen many things disappear, including people, but praise God. <laughs> Psalm 37, verse 2. Uh, verse 3, let's start at verse 3. Is everybody there? Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. In other words, you are going to be a partaker of his faithfulness, his promises. Delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart, because your desires will be different now. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. He shall bring forth your righteousness as a light and your justice as a noonday. Rest in the Lord and wait patiently for him. Don't fret because of him who prospers in his way, because of the man who brings wicked schemes to pass. Cease from anger, forsake wrath. Do not fret, it only causes harm. In other words, feed on him, his faithfulness. In other words, he is faithful to complete. And everything associated with you, he's faithful. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He's just waiting for us to get in position so we can cooperate all the way through. Change, change, change. And there's parts where the, when we make mistakes, he corrects us. And there's nothing wrong with that. Some of us need a kick in the butt now and then, you know. Feed on him. Take, partake of all who he is in the spirit. Ephesians 3. Ephesians 3 and verse 1. It's good to hear the pages turn it on a Tuesday night. Again, if you turn them fast enough, you'll fan your neighbor. Amen? Psalm, or Ephesians 3, verse 1, let's speak it. For this reason I, Paul, the prisoner of Christ Jesus, for you Gentiles, if indeed you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which was given to me for you, how that by revelation he made known to me the mystery as I have briefly written already, by which when you read you may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known to the sons of men, as it is, has been revealed by the Spirit to his holy apostles and prophets, that the Gentiles should be fellow heirs of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ through the gospel or through the message of truth, of which I became a minister according to the gift of grace of God given to me by the effective working of his power. Hallelujah. So we are partakers of the promises, in other words, partakers of benefits. The word says he daily loads us with benefits. The word says that by his stripes we're healed. It's a part of benefits. Prosperity is a part of benefits. Deliverance is a part of the benefits. Does everybody understand? Wow is a part of the benefit, man. That's a wow benefit, man. Praise God. In other words, there's nothing he can't do. Everything's about positioning. 2 Timothy chapter 1.
in verse 8. 2 Timothy 1.8, Therefore do not be ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, nor of his prisoner, but share with me in the what? Sufferings for the gospel according to the power of God, who has saved us and called us with a holy calling. That's a divine calling. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began but now has been revealed by the appearing of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel, to which I was appointed a preacher and apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. For this reason, I also suffer these things. Nevertheless, I am not ashamed, for I know whom I have believed and am persuaded that he is able to keep what I have committed to him until that day. Hold fast the pattern of sound words which you have heard from me in faith and in love which are in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed to you, kept by the Holy Spirit who dwells in you. Who what? Dwells in you. So in this, we are partakers of his sufferings. You know, many people don't want to avoid any kind of suffering. In other words, you and I are going to go through all kinds of difficulties sometimes. Amen? You're going to go through ups and downs in life. Welcome to the earth. It's ruled by Satan's kingdom. You're going to be disappointed. People will disappoint you. You'll disappoint yourself. You know, you're going to make mistakes. Something you're going to assume on that was different. But you know what? You've got to burn through all of that. Why? Because it's all part of the temporary realm. Amen? It's all part of the what? Temporary realm. When you and I are reconnected, we're eternal now. We're not temporary. We're just walking in this place. But we're already dead. We're already dead. We've died to this place. We're now alive in Christ. Amen? We are hidden. Our life is hidden in Christ. But see, if you don't understand it, don't know that the devil knows you don't get it. And he'll torment you. He'll mislead you. He'll provoke you. He'll intimidate you. He'll tempt you. See, he knows what you think. Hello. Never let nobody tell you the devil can't read what your thoughts are. He's a spirit. Amen. I've stood before angels and I knew every one of my thoughts. Every single one. Blew me away. Hebrews 12. Hallelujah. Partakers of the divine. In verse 7. Oh, yes. Now let's start at five. Uh, did you bring your Holy Ghost eraser? Praise God. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks to you as sons and daughters. My son, do not despise the chasing of the Lord. Hallelujah. Nor be discouraged when you are rebuked by him. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens and scourges every son whom he receives. If you... If you Endure chastening and don't run or grumble and complain and blame everybody else for what's going on. If you endure chastening, God deals with you as sons and daughters. For what son is there whom a father does not chasten? But if you are without chastening, of which all have become partakers, then you are what? Illegitimate and not sons. Every one of us partakes of the corrections of God. Furthermore, we've had human fathers who corrected us, and we paid them respect. Shall we not much more readily be in subjection to the Father of spirits and what? And live. For they indeed for a few days chasten us as seemed best to them, but he for our profit, that we may be partakers of what? His holiness. Now, no chastening seems to be joyful for the present, <clears throat> 
but painful. Nevertheless, afterward it yields the peaceable fruit of righteousness to those who've been trained by it. Therefore strengthen the hands which hang down and the knee, feeble knees and make straight paths for your feet so that what is lame may not be dislocated, but rather be what? Healed. Partakers of his correction, not runners from his rebuke. Amen. We become partakers of his holiness. That's his nature. That's his character. And I want to close at First John chapter 2. First John chapter 2. Verse 15. First John chapter 2, verse 15. Everybody there? Let's speak it. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. Who's the ruler of the world? Satan. And the world is passing away in the lust of it. <clears throat> but he who does the will of God abides forever. Say that with me. He who does the will of God abides forever. So to do the will of God, are you a partaker of the divine? Yes. Little children, is the last hour, and if you have heard that the Antichrist is coming, even now many Antichrists have come, by which we know that it is the last hour. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been with us, they would have continued with us, but they went out that they might be made manifest that none of them were really of us. But you have a what? An anointing from the Holy One. And you know all things. Now what's the anointing? The eternal what? Presence, power, and truth of God Almighty. And you know all things. I have not written you because you do not know the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. Who is a liar, but he who denies that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist who denies the Father and the Son. Verse 23. <clears throat> Whoever denies the Son does not have the Father either. For he who acknowledges the Son has the Father also. Therefore let that abide in you which you heard from the beginning. If what you heard from the beginning abides in you, you also will abide in the Son and in the Father. And this is the promise that he has promised us eternal life. These things I have written to you concerning those who try to deceive you or give you false doctrines. But the anointing, the eternal presence and power of Jesus Christ, which you have received from him, abides in you, and you do not need that anyone teach you. But as the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true and is not a lie, and just as it is taught you, you will abide in him. And now, little children, abide in him, that when he appears, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. If you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone who practices righteousness is born of him. Amen. See, we are partaking of that anointing now. But that's where the baptism of the Holy Spirit comes. Amen. And you maintain that infilling. Is everybody okay? Praise God. Father, we give you glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. We ask that you seal your word of encouragement to each and every one of us that we may continue to be partakers of you, the divine. Divine order, holiness, and character of nature of who you are. That the world may see you and not us. And bring all glory and honor and praise to your name. In Jesus' name. Everybody said amen.